Hello everybody, uh, uh, am I audible? Okay. So, uh, I am Tuhin, uh, so I work at Impel Labs as a data scientist. Uh, we basically specialize in building personalized recommendation system and today I am going to talk about uh, some of the cutting edge technologies that we are kind of experimenting with and we are on the process of productionizing all of those things actually, right. So, we will be talking about the recommendation system as you can see uh, that to hybrid and that to using probabilistic graphical model, right. So, we will come to that what hybrid uh, recommendation system means and what is exactly probabilistic graphical model. But uh, when we talk about the uh, recommendation system, the first uh, some of the things that came in come to our mind are uh, like Hotstar, Netflix, Amazon, right. Uh, but here what we are going to do is we are going to keep it very generalized and uh, for the uh, simplicity we can take some example of let us say news media recommendations. So, that we can uh, kind of I mean make sense about what we will be talking about. And these are the main stuffs that we will be covering in this particular talk, right. Uh, so, uh, first question that basically comes to our mind is why what is hybrid recommendation system and why do we need it, right. So, in recommendation systems, uh, two kind of uh, two genres of recommendation systems are very popular, right. One is content based, other is collaborative filtering. So, for content based recommendation system, what uh, it is exactly is uh, there are similar items or the contents or videos in terms of let us say news media, right. So, for example, let us say I am interested in political news or social issues related news, right. So, based on content based recommendation, the recommendations that I will get in terms of news recommendation, those will be pretty much related to the political issues and the social issues, right. So, what happens is there is a over specialization, right. So, probably I might be interested in sports uh, news or entertainment news, but as those are not there in my previous history and those are not similar to uh, whatever I watched pre before, that is why those will not be get recommended to me, right. So, that is a huge problem for the content based recommendation. So, uh, and the pr another problem is uh, the it looks only at a user level history, right. It does not look at other users what they have watched, right. So, probably there are similar users like me, they have watched something else and that I might be interested in. So, those kind of things are not covered in content based recommendations, right. Uh, in collaborative filtering, user based interaction, uh, all those things are taken into consideration. But the problem is, if a particular content is let us say unpopular, that means that particular content is not viewed by enough number of users, that will not come out as a recommendation, even if it has potential uh, uh, to get recommended to a particular user, right. And other problem is the cold start problem. So, let us say a particular user is very new to a system, right. We do not know enough about that particular user, what did you watch, what are her like, what is his likings or her likings, right. So, that way we cannot be uh, pretty much confident about uh, giving him recommendations, right. So, these are the main drawbacks of two kind of popular genres of recommendations. In hybrid recommendation, we basically combine all the positive things about those two stops, right. So, what we what we trying to do is uh, using probabilistic graphical model, we are going to build a hybrid recommendation system that will use the essence of content based and collaborative filtering both into account and build a better model, right. So, what is a PGM? What is a probabilistic graphical model, right? So, it basically is a directed acyclic graph where individual nodes are dependent on only its parent. And based on that, we basically say that what is the transition probability from a particular node to its child node. So, that is what it is about in a nutshell. So, let us see how probabilistic graphical model can make inference, right. So, on the left hand side, uh, it is a simple graph where A, B, C are three nodes. Uh, a and B are the parent of C. That means, C is dependent on A and B and A and B are independent of anybody, right. So, from this particular uh, graph, what we can do is we can create the conditional probability tables which are associated with individual nodes. How we can get it is based on the co-occurrence pattern of A, B and C. 
if we can build this kind of condition probability tables, we can get any kind of query resolved. So, for example, if I want to know what is the probability of B equals to 1 given C equals to 1. So, for example, what is the probability of watching a particular video given another video is watched. So, those kind of queries we can solve using this particular Bayesian rules, right. So, as you can see probability of A, B and C that is called the joint probability distribution is basically the product of individual probabilities, which is probability of A, probability of B and probability of C is basically dependent on A and B. So, that is why it is written like that fashion. If we can get that kind of expression for any kind of graph and we have the pro conditional probability tables which are associated to individual nodes, we can calculate any kind of queries. For example, we can calculate what is the probability of A given B is not watched and C is watched, right. So, all those kinds of things are possible using this simple kind of model. Now, what is the benefits of using probabilistic, probabilistic graphical model, right. So, here what we are doing is as we can see that A, B and C are kind of interdependent on each other, right. So, it basically brings in the essence of the content based uh, filtering. On, on top of that, we are also kind of considering what is the co-occurrence of individual nodes that basically brings in the collaborative filtering essence, right. So, both of the things basically we are putting it into a single graph where individual nodes are dependent on its parents and individual ages basically represents what is with what probability the uh, other node is going to be uh, come out as a recommendation, right. So, this is basically the essence of uh, probabilistic graphical model and this is how we are using content based and collaborative filtering uh, recommendations to build a hybrid recommendation system, right. Yeah, so, so for example, in this case, uh, a and B could be let us say topics. For example, it could be political news and sports news, right. And uh, C could be something related to uh, let us say uh, uh, Narendra Modi gave some uh, prizes to uh, or the, some awards to Virat Kohli, right. So, those could be kind of related to both kind of genres, right. So, it is just a small section of the big graph just to explain how exactly the calculations can be made. But it would be a big graph where uh, individual nodes will have multiple parents, individual parents will have multiple childs and that way the probability of getting chosen in the recommendation set will be depending on, right. Yes. Yeah, so, so this particular uh, graph is not dependent on the user, right. So, it is, it represents only the content. Right. So, if you have the different genres and the videos and the contents out of it, we can build topic model out of it, we create a big giant graph. It is independent of what are the users it is, I mean people are view, viewing from, right. So, that is not at all dependent on the users. So, even if a user is totally new to the particular system, based on the what is the viewing pattern in default in that particular population will be given as a default recommendation. Yeah, so, so when a particular person is coming for the first time, you do not have any viewing pattern of that particular person, you do not have any usage pattern, right. So, yeah, exactly. So, this particular probabilistic graphical model cannot, okay. So, it might be at a global level, it might be at a user segment level as well, right. So, individual user segments can have individual probabilistic graphical models. So, when a particular new user is coming based on his demography or the, or the uh, interest, we can kind of make it fall in into a particular user segment and for that particular uh, corresponding probabilistic graphical model, we can recommend that particular recommendation, right. Okay. So, uh, so, the approach that we followed in this particular case was uh, first of all, we tried to find out uh, what is the relationship between different genres, right. So, for example, in news domain, when we have uh, videos related to politics, videos related to sports, videos related to entertainment, uh, those videos are kind of independent of each other. They have only the single parent and apart from that, we do not we are not able to make any sense whether those are related or not, whether genres are related or not, right. We cannot make that kind of uh, inference out of it. So, the first thing is to find out the relationship between different genres or categories based on the 
content of individual videos. In terms of the textual metadata, uh, uh, we, we kind of did the LDA, the latent direct letter allocation. It is a topic modeling technique. And that particular graph that we create is, it is an unweighted dependency graph. That's why we call it as UDG. Once we build that particular graph structure, then based on the viewing pattern of individual users, we kind of create that particular uh, conditional probability table individual to uh, nodes, right? And once we do that, then using the uh, simple example that we showed, uh, we can find out any kind of queries, right? So uh, let's see how the UDG or unweighted the dependency graph is kind of created, right? So for a particular content, let's say we are getting the news videos, uh, we get the, uh, we extract the metadata. Uh, in our particular case, it was mostly structured, like this part is the description. Uh, in terms of the description, that is a piece of text. Uh, uh, but in, the, in terms of, I mean, finding out what is the description and what is the genre, those were structured. In terms of description text, it was unstructured data. So what we did is we did the topic modeling on the uh, description part, and we found out uh, different topics out of it. And given the genre and the video ID and the topics we found, we try to find a connection between them and create a dependency graph. So let's see how this looks. So on the left hand side, these are the explicit connections that we get from the data already there. That is uh, in the uh, lower node, the child node are basically the video IDs or the content IDs and the parents are basically genres like uh, sports or politics like that, right? And once we use the particular algorithm to find the unweighted dependency graph, on the right hand side, we, we kind of introduce a different uh, second level, which are the topics, right? These are the output of the LDA model. Now we can see that topic two and topic three are kind of uh, uh, common to genre one and genre two. So previously what we had is genre one and genre two were totally independent, right? There was no relationship. But we could find from the uh, graph generation that genre one and genre two are not totally independent. There are some similarities between them, right? So we want to exploit this this particular relationship between two categories in terms of two videos are also now related, right? Uh, which were not related before. So using this particular structure, and once we have the different user viewing pattern, then we can just train a particular probabilistic graphical model that will come to the later slides. And we can find out different queries like given uh, content uh, two and content four watch, what is the probability that content five should be also recommended, right? So uh, in terms of uh, uh, real life implementation, uh, we can see it as a very high level picture like this. Like uh, there are multiple users who watched multiple news videos. And let's say John watched political news and sports news, then what should we recommend, right? So this is a simple uh, uh, question that we are uh, trying to answer in this case. So uh, while we come to the implementation, uh, let me uh, take you through two kind of approaches that are pretty popular in the market. Uh, that is one is the vertically scalable. This is uh, good for around 20K or 50K node uh, kind of uh, data. Uh, but it is uh, vertically scalable means uh, if we add multiple CPUs and uh, increase the RAM, then obviously performance will be better. Uh, in terms of horizontally scalable, uh, uh, we can uh, build it on Edward or PyMC3, uh, which are a deep learning framework, uh, and we can make it work across uh, different uh, uh, virtual machines, and uh, uh, we can serve the recommendation in real time also. So the simple code, a simple prototype that is available in the GitHub, that the link you will find it here. So I'll just uh, take you through the uh, code just to get you an uh, understanding about how this particularly, particularly works in real life. Uh, so let me show the notebook. This particular notebook is available in the link that is present. Uh, it depends on the business case that you are doing, right? So uh, if you are, so there are two factors that are coming to picture. One is the, how frequently the content is updating, right? I mean, how much delta content I'm getting and how much user viewership is basically changing individual uh, over a time, right? So in our case, we are doing it daily level, right? Because uh, uh, we, we are basically serving to a very popular news media and uh, we are getting huge traffic out of it, right? The, 
and in news media you would you would realize that every day new contents are coming up right uh, so that's why the graph needs to be updated every day along with it uh, the new viewership also is getting changed every day right so daily basis we are basically changing it yeah so uh, inter so that is that becomes the time based uh, uh, time based component that needs to be added in the in, in this particular model right so uh, or or i should say that what are the trending videos that are coming right so that way we can kind of i mean create a combination of the recency of news uh, what is the number of view counts that we are getting into a particular video and that can be i mean creating a ensemble kind of technique to along with the pgm model to give output of like that um, i'm not sure why the uh, browser is not showing yeah or do i need to yeah it is System preference. Yes. So so this notebook is available in GitHub. You can uh, uh, download it. You can run it. The data is also there, and the dependencies are also pretty simple. We used pomegranate library for implementing this particular probabilistic graphical model. We tried uh, 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 PGMPy also. Uh, that was the initial version, and then we shipped it to pomegranate. Uh, yes. So first, what we do is we load the video data. That is the news media data, where you can see that uh, these are the individual uh, attributes. Uh, we have the video ID. We have the category name. So category name is basically the genre and sort description, story text and the title are basically part of the description, right? So what you do is we concatenate these three columns and we get the description out of it. So once we get the, and then we load the Cokens matrix also, that is the uh, viewing pattern of different users, uh, which contains the information about which videos has been watched by which user. So that matrix we basically also is an input to this particular model. As we can see that there are 10 unique genres that are already there. It is a structured data. Uh, and from the description part is kind of uh, formed by concatenating the three uh, columns, as I said. Uh, we clean this particular description uh, column and uh, we run multiple uh, LDA models out of it. And as we can see that LDA basically takes uh, the number of topics as one of the parameters. So it is very important to find out the optimal number of uh, topics. So that what we do is, it is a very small uh, uh, experiment that I made it uh, to uh, uh, to keep it very simple. So we are using we are just trying five models, uh, which has uh, number of topics ranging from eight to eleven, and out of which the model with the low, low perplexity is basically the best model. Uh, we can see the in, from the plot that uh, topic number eleven. Uh, uh, the LDA model for which topic count is 11 is the best model out of it. Once we select the best LDA model, we use that particular LDA model to find out what are the topics of individual videos. So after we apply that LD, best LDA model on the description part, we get uh, the column topic list where the topics are uh, listed as the indexes. Uh, so as in LDA model, we don't have uh, I mean, a particular naming convention, right? So individual topics are basically a collection of keywords. Uh, so we are just referring individual topics as the uh, only the keywords or the topic IDs. Uh, anyway, it is not going to make any problem to the probabilistic graphical model because it will be acting as an individual node, uh, which will not have any uh, semantical meaning in terms of the content or the name. Uh, once we get the topics, and the video IDs and the category name. Then we have the three levels. And as explained in the presentation, we can create that, generate that particular graphical model out of it, which is we call the UDG, 
right. Once we build, so uh, in the next section we write three functions which are necessary to produce the results so that pomegranate can consume it and train the particular model. So what it requires is it requires the UDG that is the structure, it requires the node list and uh, it requires the uh, uh, parent dig that is for a particular node what are the list of parents it has. So okay, so in this particular data frame that we could see that video ID topic list and the category name right. Previously the entertainment news was the parent of the first video ID right here. So now what will happen is the topic ID 2 will come as a second layer and it will basically become an intermediate node between the category and the video ID right. So that way it will connect individual things right. So Yes. It will, it will have two parents. So for example, for uh, the second index, exactly, exactly, exactly. So what happens is here you can see that Indian news and entertainment news share the same topic, the first topic itself, right. So that way we can find out the relationship between individual genres as well as individual videos also. And that we can exploit while querying the probabilistic graphical model. So once we uh, do that, uh, we, it is a simple call to pomegranate model to train that particular uh, model out of it. And it takes around 27 uh, seconds and uh, for around uh, 5500 videos that we have tested here. And now coming to the prediction part, right. So as in the example that we showed, uh, here also we are trying to say that, okay, these two video IDs have been watched. That's why these, uh, the values are one for this then what are the videos I should recommend, right. So once we set this and we use the model to uh, predict on the observations, we kind of I mean get a result dict out of it which has the video IDs and the probabilities along with it which will represent what is the probability with which it should be recommended for not. So uh, this is pretty much, uh, yes. What happens if you have a code that for a code start you can Yeah, as he also uh, raised the same question, right. So this graphical model will be uh, kind of uh, individual to individual user segments, right. So uh, let's say we have the user user pool, out of it we find let's say 10 segments out of it. Now for individual 10 segments we have disjoint sets of users. And for individual sets of users we have different PGM models. Now when a new user comes who does not have any viewing pattern or any history, he will be anyway falling into one of those segments based on the metadata or any information that we are capturing out of the users, right. And then when we, once we make it fall in a particular segment, then we will refer to the probabilistic graphical model corresponding to that particular user segment. Exactly, yeah. Well, one default recommendation we can always show him. So in this particular case, the default recommendation would be uh, based on the population itself, right. So I, so, uh, in this particular case observations, right, the, in the observation I cannot, I might say that I did not see anything, I can send an empty dictionary, right. Then also it will send me the default recommendation that is there already in the particular graph. Okay, so in this, yeah, so that is the beauty of this recommendation model, right. So here what we are saying that this particular video ID uh, corresponding to the value is 1, right, for both of them. Now if a particular uh, user explicitly said that I don't want to watch this video or did a thumbs down, right. So we can, we will say that, okay, for that particular video ID, the value would be 0 here. Exactly, that will also be taken care of here. So uh, this is pretty much the demo part, you can try it out uh, uh, and you can send me the feedbacks also. Uh, let me come to the next part. So this is the performance of the pomegranate that we kind of found out. So as we are building production level system, it is very important that whether the model is scaling with the data and the uh, viewing pattern or not, right. So we benchmark the model till 400,000 nodes and what you could see is 
pomegranate is good for low and medium kind of uh, uh, traffic, right. So, till 50k, 40k, it is working pretty much fine. You can see that the training time does not matter actually, only the prediction time matters. Uh, and we can see that for 50k, it is around 26 seconds it is taking. So, probably the cases where the response time is not that important like email notification, right. So, that way uh, it might be useful for very high volume of data, but for real time recommendations it might not be the best case, right. So, this is the benchmarking we did for uh, 8 CPU machine and 16 GB memory. Uh, now, coming to the uh, summary part, right. So, uh, as we can see that while we build the conditional probability table, the size of the conditional probability table is dependent on how many number of nodes it has, right, I mean in, in the parent node. So, if a particular node has two parent node, then the num uh, size of the conditional probability table would be 2 to the power 2 minus 1, that is 2, right. If So, in the same way, if we have like 32 parents to a particular node, right, that will be 2 to the power 32, that will be out of memory, out of memory uh, problem. Right. So, we need to be smart enough to create the unweighted dependency graph. If we have that kind of scenarios, we need to break it down into multiple levels. So, as we can see that multiple levels in the gross histographical model is not a problem. But if we have a two layer gross histographical model and one child is having 100 parents, that will fail anyway. Right. So, we need to be very smart uh, while creating the ontology tree, that is the UDG. Coming to the second part, it, it is very important that we maintain a directed cyclic graph. Uh, if, we, if there is a cycle present in a particular graph, that also can be addressed. Uh, so, there is something called Bayesian belief propagation, which is also part of the pomegranate library. And uh, with a maximum number of iterations, we can kind of say that, okay, after this many iterations, we should stop and we should take the inference out of it, right. So, that is uh, something that we can, uh, we can try. And coming to the last point is the scalability, right. So, we, the pomegranate as we already talked, it is a vertically scalable uh, solution. Uh, but we can use that word which runs on TensorFlow and uh, using variational inference technique, it is pretty scalable and we can get real life, uh, real time uh, prediction out of it, right. So, uh, that is it from me. Uh, any question? Yes. Yeah, so uh, normally what we what we did in our case, it was if we kind of tried to make it is not more than 6. So, uh, that is something that we tried. Uh, actually, we ran out of it, actually we ran out of uh, memory problem, that is why we came to know about it. And uh, we did not handle that particular case before and uh, when it broke, we kind of, we kind of uh, uh, debugged and we found out that, okay, this is the problem. And no, we are not going to lose any information. So, what we are going to do is we are going to create a super topic out of individual topics, right. So, we are going to break or, or we should say we are going to aggregate uh, like 10 or 20 topics into a super topic and that will be kind of connected to the genres altogether, right. So, that will basically increase the number of levels and decrease the number of parents. Output of the LDA we can play with, yes. Okay, guys. Any question? Any question? Basically, how much data is uh, good for you to find the dependencies? Uh, also, you must have done some benchmarking. Uh, so, how far do you go back to get the data and how much good? Yeah. So, when we talk about recommendation looking good and bad, we we should have a uh, certain way to specify that, right. So, that is something that we do it by every testing uh, to find out whether the model is working properly or not, right. Uh, in this particular case, uh, right now we are use, utilizing around 1.8 million viewership data and total number of videos that we are kind of handling is total 25,000 videos. Uh, uh, and for that we are getting pretty much good results out of it, right. Uh, but if you say, is, if there is any particular a uh, number, uh, I, I should say that I mean 10k for the number of contents and at least 50,000 viewership data will be good for uh, kind of generalizing or finding out the pri priors to individual nodes. Thank you.